morning, good morning, good morning again to our online viewers. We are so happy that you can take the time more to join us this morning on Pastor's Corner. We are so eagerly waiting for our discussion this morning. I welcome our online viewers, and I just before we continue, I just want you to um, call a friend, call a family member, call a neighbor, let them know that, hey, Pastor's Corner is on. And they too, so they too rather can be a part of this wonderful, wonderful discussion. So my encouragement to you today is to call your, ch your children, call your wives, call your husband if you are, they are home. A husband, call your wives if they are home and let them so that we can all be a part of Pastor's Corner discussion this morning. And with me this morning are two wonderful gentlemen. Um, they are young, they are vibrant, and they are God's men. And I, I know this morning these two scholars will do wonderful this morning as it relates to um, the discussion that is at hand. But before I ask them to introduce themselves, why don't we bow our heads as we invite God's presence this morning. Almighty and eternal Father, we thank you, Lord, in a very special way for this opportunity where we can be on Pastor's Corner again another Tuesday morning. We pray, Lord, that your divine presence would be with us and that the discussion, O oh Lord, this morning would be one that would help us to re-educate and re-inform each and every one of ourselves, even our online viewers, so that they can grow spiritually and they can know how to do that they should trust in God in spite of their situation. Amen. So bless Amen. us, O oh God, and keep us until the very end. In Jesus' wonderful name, Amen, Amen and Amen. Amen. And this morning, our topic is an interesting one. Um, it's one that it is not orthodox or common, but our topic in still this morning is same-sex union. Yes, you heard me right. Pastors are discussing this morning same-sex union. And at this time, I just want to invite my panelists who are with me this morning, my colleagues in ministry, to just invite themselves uh, and tell, or introduce themselves rather, and tell them, or tell us rather, who they are. On my father left. You have a wonderful young man there. Good morning to everyone, to all of our viewers. God has been good to us this morning. We had some showers. We need to give him praise and thanks. I am Pastor Frankie Noel, the pastor of the Eastern District 1. Yeah, well, pleasant good morning uh, to everyone, of all listeners. I see one of my friends there, Alicia Stevens. Sister Alicia, special good morning to you. Uh, my name is Pastor Clinton Lewis. And I'm the president of the Grenada Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And these two young scholars are excited this morning. So, Alicia, I'm Stephen. Call someone. Call your friend. Call your neighbor. Let them know that Pastor Connor is on this morning. Even Sweetie Williams. Call someone. Let them know. Cassandra James, you are here with us this morning. Yulin Alexander, we are so happy that you all can join us this morning as we discuss the topic, same-sex union. No, pastors? I have a question here. I don't know if it is a hard one or an easy one. But one <laughs> thing I can say that it is a good one. Mm -hmm. um, right. What exactly is referred to as same-sex union? What exactly is referred to as same-sex union? Pastor Frankie, you want to go first? Yes, uh, I think it's a good question. And um, to me, what is saying, it's saying here that uh, a male uh, and is in a union with another male. All right. And uh, that union could be uh, living together as husband and wife. Okay. 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 Well, well, I want to add to that. It could also be female. Well, yes. yes. Um, <laughs> a woman with a woman uh, in a sexual love relationship where they may be living together unmarried or living together married as pastor and well rightly said. Wonderful, wonderful. And the same-sex union. But could, could I add, um, God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, they got together. They created the model. They desi designed um, male and female. Mm -hmm. This is God's design yes. that is given to men. So the creator has designed and the creature 
is trying to redesign what the creator has designed. Yeah. That's correct. <laughs> yeah. That's correct. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So we are, we are saying this morning that the same-sex union is union between two males yeah. and two females. That's right. And also the same-sex union or same-sex marriage, although the union will be probably living together as boyfriend yes. and boyfriend. I can't say boyfriend and girlfriend. Mm. Or as girlfriend and girlfriend. That's right. And not just friend, but intimate in that That's sense. That's correct. Right. correct. And the same-sex marriage is where the same sex or the same individual, not opposite as what the Bible prescribes, are in a marriage relationship, I should say. That's right. They're in a right. legal uh, union. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So well, since that is established, um, does the Bible teach us that intimate love between same-sex couple is ungodly? I'll just repeat myself. And I'll, I have two texts here I want to read for us. It says, does the Bible teach us that, that intimate love, keyword, intimate love between same-sex couple is ungodly? And I'll read in your hearing, please comment on these two texts. Um, 2 Samuel chapter 1, verse 26. And I want our online viewers as well to um, take jot down the texts so that you can read also in your spare time. Uh, so I'll read 2 Samuel 1, verse 26. It says, I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan. You have been very pleasant to me. Your love to me was wonderful, surpassing the love of a woman. That's David speaking here, and I'll read also in your hearing of 4 Samuel chapter 18, verse 1. Now the Bible reads, it says, Now when he had finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Now pastors, mm. I've just read those two texts. Um, those texts are yes in the Bible. Text. Yes, they are. I read them from the Bible. So, Pastor, please comment on those texts as it relates to. Um, I'll just read over the question: Does the Bible teach is that intimate love between a same-sex couple is ungodly? Well, the Bible teaches that we should should love everybody. All right. That's right. And um, as believers in Christ. Love knew no boundaries. True. Uh, that is the agape love. That's right. The love of God. Because um, God loves us despite of our behavior and despite of our way of life. He loves us with an everlasting love. That's right. But True. when you are talking about intimate love, hmm. <laughs> that is the love that should be shared between a husband and, and a wife. Oh, yes. Uh, so you have different levels of, of love. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. wonderful, wonderful. Dr. Lewis? Yeah. Well, when you look at Second Samuel one twenty six, it's very interesting that um, we find David saying, um, referring to Jonathan as his brother. Yeah. A brother Jonathan. Yeah. And uh, that already puts this in a, in a whole different realm. Exactly. Yeah. Because, uh, and then he talks about, you know, your, your, your love for me. Mm -hmm. Is is even surpasses that of of a woman. Yes. Well, that is that is not hard to understand, because as Pastor Noel made reference to agape love. Uh, when people give their life to God, mm -hmm. God places in their heart the agape love. Oh yes. The agape love surpasses all other kind of love. Pastor, just hold on. I just wanted to repeat that again yes. for us this morning. The agape love. Agape love. Yes. Yes surpasses all other love. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. So that even in I loving my wife, I, if, I, if I don't love my wife with agape love, that marriage already in trouble. <laughs> True. Yeah. So that agape love is the one that controls all of that. So let me just help us. You see the problem we have in English, we have one word for love. True. I love my wife. Yeah. I love my dog. Yeah. I love food. You know? <laughs> But the, the, when you go to the Bible, especially the Greeks, they were very specific pastors. Yes, yes, true. So when they talk about family love, they use stuji. Yeah. Right. I love my daughter. I love my son. That's stuji. Yes. When they talk about friendship love, we talk about filio. Yes. So I, I love my friend. That's yes. filio. And then you have agape, mm -hmm. which is the crowning man of everything a person will talk about. Yes. And then you have the fourth one, eros, eros yes. which is sexual love. Mm-hmm. So when we talk about uh, Jonathan and David, 
he, he, he refers to him as his brother. Mm -hmm. And he loves him with a happy love. Yeah. It's possible that he also loved him with filio. Mm -hmm. So uh, that kind of love surpasses. When you really love people with a happy love, it really surpasses sexual love, eros. Mm -hmm. you know, so David could say, my love for you, uh, your love for me, was stronger than the love of, of, of a woman. Yes. We could understand that in that context. So when it comes to same sex, there's a problem because uh, I could love somebody with agape. Mm -hmm. In fact, I should love everybody with exactly. agape. Exactly. Exactly. And that's, that could be a strong relationship there. Yes. But it's not sexual. True. Then I could love uh, people with filio. Mm -hmm. They're really my friend. I yeah. love them as a friend. But there's nothing sexual about that either. True. All that is healthy, that could happen between a man and a man and a woman and a woman. Yeah. That's still healthy. Mm -hmm. Then we talk about stuji. I love my son. I love my daughter. Nothing wrong with that. You know, uh, my, uh, my, my children, uh, the brother, uh, my son loves his brother. Mm -hmm. My daughter loves her sister. Mm -hmm. um, stuji, nothing wrong with that. True. But when it comes to eros, yes. eros is only in the context of a man and a woman. Yes. So once a man and a man is in eros, they're having sexual relationship. Or that love is sexual. That is sin. Yes, yes. Because eros is only between a male and a female in marriage. Wonderful. Outside wonderful. of that. Is sinful. Wonderful, wonderful. And I love Pastor yeah. how you break down the term, the Greek meaning, and which should be a guide for us as to the different type of love that should be administered. And as you as you was rightfully saying that this love that we speak in English is love is a generic in a generic sense. That's that right. I love you, I love you, I yes. love you. But yes. when, when come for the Bible, the Bible yes. Break down the different type of love and make those distinctions, and that is very important. Yes, that yeah. is very important for us this morning. Um, if if I should add, go ahead, Pastor. Uh, when people refer into strong friendships, yes, mm, they usually refer to David and jo Jonathan. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, it's a classic example for us. We we can be genuine friends. Correct, yes, yeah. correct. You know the person that you know are all friends. Yes, so we we can be true to them and real really needed yeah. to them. Yeah, real needed. needed to them. Yeah. Yes. But there's nothing sexual. sexual. Yes, yes. There's true. nothing sexual. True. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, based on what we have just discussed, can you um, pro please provide any biblical evidence to show that the same-sex marriage are condemned by the word of God? Based on what we have just discussed, can you please provide any biblical evidence? And I love the facts, Pastor, we're talking yeah. about biblical, biblical. evidence. Mm. Yeah. So it's not what Dr. Lewis says. It's not That's what right. Pastor That's Frankie says. It's right. what the Bible says. Yes. So can you provide any biblical evidence to show that uh, same-sex marriages are condemned by the word of God? Well, uh, there are several. Mm -hmm. uh, if we should go back to the beginning, in Genesis chapter 2, uh, from uh, verse uh, 20, 24 and, mm -hmm. and 25, uh, Adam named everything. And then Adam was lonely. Yes. And, and God put him to sleep and he created the woman. Correct. And then um, uh, Adam said, this is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Yeah. And then the, the verse 25 said, for this cause shall a man yes. leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife. Yes. yes. And they two shall be one flesh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's where the, pro the, the, the continuation of procreation, you mm -hmm. know? Yes. When a husband, a man and a woman get married, uh, then you can have children. 128. And, yeah, yeah, and yeah. procreation. There are lots of other texts uh, that we can use. The Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9 says, mm -hmm. Do we not know that the unrighteous would not inherit the kingdom of God? That's right. And then he said, Do not be dis deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, uh, nor homosexuals. Mm -hmm. Nor sodomites, yes. nor thieves, nor covetous, nor junkards, nor uh, revelers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom. Yeah. That's right. And that, that word homosexual there yeah. is referring to same-sex marriage. Right. Yes, true. A man and a woman, and also a, a, a man and man, and woman and, and woman. woman. Yes, mm. yes, yeah. yes. Sure, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Dr. Lewis? Yeah, well, uh, the thing is that there's a lot of passages in the Bible that we can use. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, the thing is that 
people who support homosexual marriages or homo, uh, uh, same-sex union, mm -hmm. they are challenging those texts and putting their own spin own on spin, it. Yeah, it's true. But, uh, but I'll start with Pastor Noel. Um, started in, in, uh, we have to go back to the Beginning, origin. Yeah. Yes. And nobody could challenge that. True. Yeah. God is the one who set up marriage. Marriage exactly. is not a man's idea. True. Right. Marriage is the divine God. Oh, who yes. instituted marriage and yeah. to tell us how marriage must operate. Exactly. And as Pastor Noel make reference to Genesis 2 and 24 and 25, you know, and God said, for that reason shall a man leave his father and his mother, yeah. cleave unto his wife, in that case a female, yeah. and then they become one flesh. Yeah. And then Jesus came back and reiterated that in Mark chapter 10, mm -hmm. verse 6 to 9. You know, and Jesus says in the beginning it was not so. Yeah. And, and um, you know, and then he comes back he says, God made a male and female. Yeah. Uh, read that text for me, please, Pastor. Mark, Mark chapter, chapter 10, 10 and verse 6 to 9. Like Jesus okay, now. Mark chapter 10, verse 6 to 9, it says, But from the beginning of the creation, yes. God made them male and female. Correct. Uh, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother mm -hmm. and join to his wife, mm -hmm. and the two shall become one flesh. Right. Uh, so then they are no longer two but one, one flesh. Verse 9 says, Therefore, what the Lord has joined together, let no man separate. Right. So Jesus is coming now. Jesus here is here. Reaffirming exactly. what was done at creation. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then we have the Apostle Paul, yeah. who in, um, in, in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 31, we won't read that, but okay. Ephesians 5 31 says the same thing. Well, yeah. A man shall leave his mother and, and father okay. and cleave mm -hmm. unto his wife and they become one flesh. Yeah. So that uh, as far as the Bible is concerned, uh, marriage is between a man yeah. and a woman. Yes, wonderful. And, and, um, and never anything else. And then we go to Romans 1, 24 to 27. And yeah. for listeners, you can write a text and read it. Mm -hmm. Romans 1, 24 to 27. Paul is talking in the context, again, alluding to the creation story yes. and, um, and God instituting marriages. And, um, and there, um, Paul makes it abundantly clear that uh, any uh, relationship Outside of uh, a male and a female yeah. in marriage, any sexual relationship is sin. Yes, yes. So same-sex uh, marriage uh, is not supported by Scripture. Instead of that, Scripture says it's sinful. Yes, yes, true, true. Wonderful, wonderful. And I'll just read Romans one twenty-seven. Yes. Just for emphasis. It says, Likewise also the men, living the natural use of the woman. That's right. Born in their lust, lust. for one another, mm -hmm. men with men yes. committing that which is shameful. That's right. And receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. That is correct. So Wonderful. a woman with a woman in a sexual relationship is shameful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A man and a man it's shameful. Yes, true. Because that's not God's order of things. It's wonderful, wonderful. I'm so happy this morning that the pastors, we are... It is not what Pastor Francois said, or Dr. Lewis, or Pastor Noel. It's what the Bible says. Amen. And, um, it's not our opinion, but it's what the Bible says. And if Correct. we are Bible-believing Christians or followers of Jesus, then what the Bible says, that settles it. Amen. And just to make Amen. emphasis, the individual who practice those things, and we, have to, we ought to love them, as yes. we were alluding to earlier. And Correct. But the practice is not, is, not, is not one that we should love, but the individual itself God asks us to love everyone, but yes. we cannot love the sin Correct. that they practice. Yes. So I just want to welcome our online viewers again. Yes, Alicia Stephen, you are. Thank you for inviting and telling your friends. And we have with us Marcella Ch Childs. We do good morning, pastors and viewers. Uh, we have Veronica Lashman with us this morning. Mm. And we also have Grace Lynn Thomas. We are welcome. We thank you for being. We have Yvonne Marshall. We thank you for being here. Eustace Sembona is watching as well. We thank everyone who, are, who is joining us, to, who is joining with us this morning. I yes. know that the, the discussion is one that is very interesting. It is impactful and informative. Usually we will hear when they're talking about same-sex marriage and same-sex and just that topic. There's a lot of issues around it. But this morning, we, are, we cannot solve all the issues, no. but we can bring some light as it relates to what the Bible says on those issues. Amen. 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 So wonderful. So pastors, I have a next question here for you guys. You know, it's, not a, it's not a hard one, you know, <laughs> but it's a good one. All right. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, should the issue of same-sex marriage be one of legality or morality? Hmm. Or should the yeah. issue mm -hmm. of same-sex marriage be one of legality or morality. Dr. Lewis? Mm -hmm. 
I would like you to hit that one first. Yeah, well, uh, the thing is that God is supreme. Mm -hmm. And yeah. when you're talking about the matter of right and wrong, wrong. Mm -hmm. we have to go to God. Yes, yeah, true. God's law and his principles that he has laid down. He tells us what is wrong and right. True. Wrong and right cannot be determined by the majority in a, in a population. True. We're going to have chaos. Mm -hmm. Right and wrong cannot be determined by the, the legal system of a country. Un, uh, unless the legal um, system is following the guidelines of God. True. Because something can be right legally, but wrong morally. Oh, yeah. so, um, so morality, when we're talking about right and wrong, we're in the realm of morality. Mm -hmm. And so to talk about um, uh, homosexuality, uh, whether it's, um, it's a matter of legality or morality, it's a matter of morality. Yes. And uh, therefore, to determine whether it's wrong or right, we have to go to the Bible. True. Because a country could say it's legal for a man and a man to marry. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go to the Bible. Yeah. The Bible says, no, that's wrong in the area of morality. Yeah. So, um, so, mor so that issue is an issue of morality and not just of legality. Legality, yes. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay. There, I just want to add to what... Um, Dr. Lewis said, I agree with all that he said. Um, our standards are not set by the legal minds. Correct. Our standards are set by the divine creator. That's correct. Who is our creator. Yeah. Amen. And we are his creatures. Correct. Mm -hmm. So um, when we are thinking about morals, our morals and our standards should come from the word of God. That's Amen. correct. And Amen. if what the, uh, the world is saying as standards that are contrary to what the word of God says, then we cannot stand by it. No. We have no. to stand by what the word of God says. Exactly. True, true. So there are some things that are legal based on the law, but based on the standard of God's word, then it is not right. That's true. correct. True. That so is a correct. country can make a certain decision, legal decision. Yes. And they can say that it is right. But when we put it alongside the Bible, correct. it can yeah. be incorrect. incorrect. That's correct. And that is important for us. We, mm -hmm. we, we are living in an age where the flexibility on the issue of this thing of, of fluidity in terms of relationship with God mm -hmm. and where anything goes. And it can and 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 we only only reason with young people and reason with right. even what is mm -hmm. being produced out there. It's like there is no moral standing of certain things anymore. Mm -hmm. There is a degrad a degradation of That's certain correct. principles. That's and, correct. And and that is Lord. plaguing the entire world. Yes. But mm -hmm. as God's people, we need to stand for principle. Yes. And stand for morality. Yes. Lawyers. Yes. Countries and leaders yes. may make legal decisions. But when it comes to the Bible, the Bible stands alone and stands against yeah. all those illegal implications yeah. or legal agendas or so forth. In other so, words, uh, they, they have to be a standard. Yes. If there's no standard, everybody makes a standard. And the standard is God yes, and yes, his yes, word. Yes. And yes. everything else has to be judged by the standard. By the standard. Oh, wonderful, 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 yeah. Doc. So at this time, we'll now um, take a break and we'll have a few announcement and promotion so just stay tuned as we have a few promotion from the youth department of the grenada conference of seven day adventists is the festival of the arts in an explosion of praise join the excitement as talents from across the island are displayed in music drama poetry instrumentals and the arts Every district will be represented in this flamboyant symphony of praise. Festival of the Arts. Don't miss it. Universe 2022 Gospel Explosion is coming. Join the youth of the Grenada Conference of Seventh-day Adventists from Sunday, October 9th at 7 p.m. for an electrifying evangelistic experience like no other. Come here, the ever exhilarating Pastor Oliver Scott shatter the kingdom of darkness with thundering messages from the Word of God. If we have never needed the Lord before, we sure do need Him now. Come, 
find hope in the midst of your pain. Stop and pray. Members, leaders, and prayer intercessors, join the prayer ministries of the Grenada Conference of Seventh-day Adventists for our annual prayer motorcade on Sabbath, 24th September from 9 a.m. The motorcade starts from Shantimal Junction and continues to Marley Junction in Sotez. We break for lunch at the McDonald College and resume the motorcade to Rose Hill, Montreach, and end at Hermitage, all at the historic parish of St. Patrick. Wonderful. We just want to welcome you back this morning who are joining us online. And don't forget um, just to call your friend and let them know that we are in the second half of this morning's um, discussion as it relates to same-sex union and the implication that it has in our world today. And to know that the Bible stands still even in this world that Amen. seems to be going down and down and deeper and deeper Amen. in sin. Amen. So we just want to welcome you again and uh, just... My two colleagues, Dr. Lewis and Pastor Noel, we thank you for being with us this morning. And right. we so far, you, 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 you guys are some top scholars here. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you, you for thank being you, here. Pastor thank Francois. you for being here this morning. <laughs> thank you for the affirmation. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Um, how can the church help gay couples without the element of discrimination? Mm -hmm. And as a church, as an entire yeah. body, mm -hmm. how can the church help gay couples? We told the elimination of, uh, well, we told the element of discriminating them. Well, uh, God's church is set up to help. Mm -hmm. That's yes. one of the institutions set up by God mm -hmm. yes. to help people. And when you talk about gay couples, it, it, it says that that is a brokenness to the original standard that God has set up. That's correct. Mm -hmm. And uh, the church should be involved in helping sinners, and we are included, yes. who have strayed away from the original principles mm -hmm. that God has laid down. Yeah. And um, we, may not, we would not support the act, but because we are believers in Christ and we have to love people, mm -hmm. we are going to love everybody. Yes. Amen. The Amen. agape love. Yes. Amen. Wonderful, wonderful. Dr. Yeah, well, well, I concur with what uh, Pastor Noel has said. And um, just to say the same thing a different way. So I would say that as a church, uh, as a follower of Christ, we have to make a differentiation between people's actions and people's personhood. And that's exactly what Pastor Noel is saying. Mm -hmm. There must be a difference between personhood an action. Yeah. So regardless of how heinous somebody's action is, I should hate that action. Mm -hmm. But I can never hate the person. True. Yeah. So I just have to relate to people the way Jesus relates to them. Exactly. Jesus hates the sin. Mm -hmm. But Jesus always loved the sinner. Yes. So we also have to have that same approach. You know, sometimes once we see a, a gay couple, um, Christians sort of Redraw themselves. No, we cannot do that. They need support. Mm -hmm. They need care. They need yeah. love. Mm -hmm. The love of God. Yeah. And so we ought to provide that, to love them, and, and to show them our concern for them, exactly. to let them know that we care about them. Yeah. But, we, but we will never endorse the wrong. True. They, they should be very clear yeah. that we don't endorse the wrong. And um, prayerfully and lovingly, we should seek to influence them towards God, uh, yes. the ways of God. So the church um, should never uh, shun itself True. or walk away True. from, from um, those couples, as Pastor Miller rightly said. But we should seek to, to reach out to them, mm -hmm. uh, to love them, to care for them. Um, but as we said, the person yeah. and not endorsing the wrong. Yes, wonderful, yeah. wonderful. And growing up, um, well, I think I always was a Seventh-day Adventist. Yes. But when I came into the church, and one thing I have learned, I learned earlier, well, early in the game, they said that the church is like a hospital. Yes. With full mm -hmm. of sick people. That's yeah. correct. And the only great physician is Jesus. Jesus. Who Amen. Can heal us. Amen. And that Amen. is the principle that we are explaining here, what yes. we are loading here this correct. morning. That we are all sinners. 
Yeah. But um, in spite that we are sinners, the grace of God is able to take us from where we are to where God wants us. Yeah, amen. And it's important amen. for us to understand that God does not save us in sin, no. but he saves us from sin. Thank you. So the practice, as Dr. Lewis was alluding to earlier, the practice is not one that God loves, but he loves the individual. Amen. And therefore, that's why the Bible informs us and says that Christ died for all. Yes. And since he has died for all, then... Anyone who is, who is practicing those behavior, we are not condemning you as an individual. No. But what we are telling you this morning is that we love you. Correct. Jesus loves you. Correct. And then he, and he can transform you. There are many probably who have this urge. Yes. Or that, 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 that knack. Or, and, and you may feel like, you know, I'm alone in this. No. But I want to let you know that Jesus sees you. Yes. And he understands your pain. He understands what you are experiencing. And he can help you once you, once you, once you, 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 you avail yourself. So that God can give you the, the, the courage, the strength to move on. And to and if you want someone to talk to you, you can, you can call someone, talk to a pastor, any of the pastors, get the number, call one of us so that you can get counseling if you so desire. Because as we are alluding to this morning, that is what the, that is what the church is here for. Amen. To help those who are struggling, not those who are in that area as well. But for many of us who are struggling with any type of different sin and deficiencies, we can pray for you and we know that we serve a God who is able to give you the overcoming power and victory in that regard. So Amen. trust in God and allow God to be the one that can help you. Yes. And sometimes you may seem as you know what, Pastor, I'm afraid, you know, I, I don't want to talk to Pastor Francois, but you have Dr. Lewis. I don't yes. want to talk to this pastor, but you have Pastor Noel, Pastor yes. Frank in Noel. You can talk to someone because every one of us needs somebody. Correct. And as I have learned all, no one is Correct. an island. That's right. And if Jesus died for me, Pastor Francois, he died for you as Correct. well. Correct. So may yeah. God continue. May you can be encouraged this morning and surrender to Jesus and give Jesus the problem. Give Jesus the, the urge. Yes. Give it to him and he will do wonders in your life. Amen. Could I Amen. add, just, just to add in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 from verse 9, Paul mm. lists, talking to the Corinthian people, he lists some of the sins, the heat, the, the, the um, hideous sins. Mm. And then in, in verse the verse 10, uh, verse 11, he says, and so was some of you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he are washed. That's right. You know? But you are sanctified. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of people who are in the Lord now and they're zealous for the Lord. Mm -hmm. And they used to practice some of those things. Mm -hmm. yeah. But when they met Jesus, Jesus transformed and changed their lives. Correct. And that is the work of the church. Correct. You know, exactly. so God can use the church to to get these people to make a decision, to make a change, yes. and and to do the right thing so that they can be washed and sanctified in the blood. So, yes, uh, and wonderful. that is why uh, Christians, a lot of Christians, have to change their attitude. Yes, yes. yes. because the attitude is the wrong one, yes. and they will push away push away people instead of of drawing them, them. and um, it becomes very tough when happening in your family. Yeah, you know, if a child comes and says to the parent. Christian parent, yeah. you know, I, I, I'm, I'm gay, and, and, and this, is my, this is my boyfriend, and we're getting married. They, they feel like the world has crumbled, they want to kill them. Mm -hmm. But no, that's not the approach. True. The approach is to love them. Yes. To love them. Let them know that you love them and you care about them. Mm -hmm. But that uh, sinful behavior, you detest it, yeah. Yeah. and you, you don't accept it. But the, the individual must never feel that the parent or a member of the household of God mm -hmm. is condemning them yeah. and throwing them away yeah. and want to have nothing to do with them. That approach is unchristian. Yes, yes, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. We have Alyssa Stevens saying, true doc. We have um, Veronica Lashman saying, thank you, Sister James. We have even um, Brother Desmond Lambert all the way from Jamaica. Amen. He's right. with us this morning. We are so happy that you have that you have, can join us. We have Sister Stedden Isaac. He says, as a church, we need to point out the sinful practice and yes. make them know we love them. Wonderful, Amen. wonderful, Amen. wonderful. Amen. Amen. Uh, Amen. Pastors, the Bible says in Leviticus 18.22, um, I'll just read it. Leviticus 18.22 says, You shall not lie with a male hmm. as with a woman. It is an abomination. The Bible says, You shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. So the Bible says that in Leviticus 18.22, can you please explain the meaning of the word abomination as stated in the text? Mm -hmm. okay, wh whenever the word 
abomination is used. It, it means it is a very strong word mm -hmm. yeah. stating that God detests That's yeah. that kind of behavior, mm -hmm. that kind of attitude, and that kind of living. It mm -hmm. is totally contrary to God's standards mm -hmm. and God's law. Yes, sure. and um, I agree. Mm -hmm. So we could use the word detestable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We could use the word loathsome. Yeah. We could use the, the word uh, reprehensible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, strong words. But as um, Pastor Noel rightly says, yes, that's the way God uh, relates to um, that kind of behavior. Yes, yes, wonderful. And I like the fact that you say behavior and not person. Not the person. <laughs> I love that. Yes, yes. You understand? And, That's correct. And, and one of the one of the um, the, it can also mean the word abomination, something a disgustful thing. Yes, and yes. You know something you know, some as yes. human being, we see certain things and they are so disgusting that yes. we cannot look at it. Correct. And much less God. Yes. Yeah. You understand? That's yes. show how that show if God looked at the act as disgustful, that shows that hey, that is something that is really bad and detestable yes. by God. Correct. And I'm, I'm saying thing. I'm not person because God loves you as an individual. Yes. So I pray by the grace of God that you will seek help yes. and allow God to be your leader because these acts are an abomination to the Lord. Amen. Um, says, do you think that uh, do you think same-sex couples should be allowed to parent children? <laughs> just, just stop for a while and I'll read over the question. Uh, our online viewers as well, I'm asking you the question so you can respond. Um, do you think same-sex couples or same-sex couples uh, should be allowed to parent children? So a man and a man parenting uh, this child or children. What do you think? Send in your answers. Yeah. Well, uh, my, my response to that is it would not be much of a problem if two males mm -hmm. are raising a child, mm -hmm. but the two males are not mm -hmm. in a sexual relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. But they are family. Mm -hmm. And um, what will happen here is that circumstances, you know, we're in a broken world. We have mm -hmm. uh, mothers alone raising children. That shouldn't be. Okay. We have fathers alone raising children. That shouldn't be. Sometimes two brothers decide mm -hmm. they're going to raise um, a sibling or, yeah. or somebody. Th that's not a problem. But if the two persons are in a sexual relationship, yeah. like a hom homosexual yeah. or lesbian relationship, then how can they raise a child? <laughs> the thing is that what are the values they're going to pass on to the child? True, yeah. They will be telling that child, what you see between us is normal. Mm -hmm. Because the child will observe them um, making love with one another. Um, sexual intimacy be with one another, mm -hmm. and the child is confused. Yes. Because now the child hears otherwise that this is not normal. So in that, that kind of environment, a child should not be placed. Yeah. With a, a, a man and a man who is in a love relationship, oh, a woman yeah. and a woman in a love relationship, they cannot produce children. Why do you want to raise children? <laughs> right. So, um, but, mm -hmm. but I'm saying there are circumstances where Pastor Noel, mm -hmm. uh, two males could be raising a child. They're not um, in any kind of love relationship or anything. It could just be relatives or family and the responsibility just fall on them to help okay. the child and to grow the child. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Because they're not passing on values to that child mm -hmm. and that is contrary to God by the lifestyle. True. They're not saying that to that child, it is okay to love a man, for a man to love a man. Is it okay for a woman to, 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 to love a woman? So we'll be hoping that in that environment, mm -hmm. um, they will be raising up that child I, I want to add to what Doc says. Um, I, I go back to the beginning mm -hmm. when God was setting up the first family. family. Yes. yes. This is God's standard. Mm -hmm. So he created the man first. The man named every other thing. And there was the loneliness and God created the woman. Yes. Um, God did not create Adam and Steve. Mm -mm. God created Adam and Eve, mm -hmm, yes. a man and a woman. Correct. Yes. And uh, the man and the woman coming together, then that's how you would have a continuation of procreation. Exactly. Correct. And that's what God wants. Exactly. That's the standard that God has. Mm -hmm. And man is trying to set up their own standards mm -hmm. that is contrary to God. Mm -hmm. 
So um, as Doc says, nothing is wrong with two, let's say two brothers yes. or, or two cousins, yes. you know, our uncle and, you know, a nephew um, bringing up children. Yes. But with, with no sexual, um, you know, relation. Relationship. Correct. Yes. Nothing Correct. is wrong with that. Correct. But um, what morals, what standard, Correct. what will the child learn? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. And while he was speaking, I, I think it was last year, I um, was looking at the news in Canada where the, the issue with same sex yes. parenting children. Mm -hmm. And Doc is a word that's confused. You confuse. Confused, yes. yes. And what happens is that in the long run, when the study have done, when they did the study in regards to children that grew up in same sex marriage, they grew up being least the least performed student or children in school correct and society and also what happens as well it distorts their mind correct as it relates to what is right and what should be exactly and sometimes people who the practice can be detrimental to the child but the person the person who is practicing are not seeing it presently exactly and in their mind sometimes you know as human beings we become selfish so you know what it is me that doing that and it's mm. me but we are not thinking about the implication it have to the young mind. That's right. And how the That's mind and, and, and usually children model what they see. You know? mm -hmm. Oh yes. You yes, understand? a large and, extent. And when 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 in nature is like, okay, well, that is not right, but in the child's mind, but my daddy is doing it. You understand? And <clears throat> the confuse is when they're calling a man mommy. Yes. You understand? Correct. And that can confuse and distort. The yes. The, the, the thinking of the child. So, I pray by the grace of God that um, those of us who are listening and hearing that we would, if we know of such case, we would help. Yes. Where it's needed or where it's necessary as Amen. much as possible. Because Amen. we all are fallen beings, and we all want to go in the same place. That is when Jesus comes. We all we all want to see Christ when He comes, so we can help each other to see Him when He comes the second time. Right. And the question says, do we think that same-sex couples should, all, should be allowed to parent children? The answer is plainly no. No. However, if an uncle and a brother, and so you know they have family where the mother and father might yes. die or something, yes. and yeah. they have mm -hmm. the siblings or the little child, and there is no problem in that brother or two brothers or an uncle and a yeah. brother is parenting a child, but as long as there is no sexual intimate relationship in that regard, yes. it is okay. Mm -hmm. That is the only exception, but yeah. not that intimate. Yeah, it's not the best. It's not the best, but yeah. um, in that particular situation, that might be the best thing to do. Yes, yes, wonderful. In your view, pastors, do you believe that? Do you believe same-sex couples should be entitled to pastoral counseling to enhance their relationship? No, Pastor, hmm. hold on, I'll read over yes. the question. <laughs> yes, yes. Take your time. Online, I want to read over the question. I'll take yes. my time. I'll go slowly this yeah. time. He says, in your view, do you believe same-sex couples mm. should be entitled to pastoral counseling to enhance their relationship? And I make emphasis, entitled to pastoral counseling mm -hmm. to enhance, hello, <laughs> to enhance the same no? relationship. Pastor <laughs> Frankie, mm. go ahead. <laughs> okay, um, the Bible, the entire Bible has to deal with man's brokenness. That's yeah. correct. From Genesis to Revelation. And the God whom we serve is the God of love. Yeah. Mm. And God has given us an awesome responsibility in the ministry of reconciliation. Yeah. And um, when we talk about, in, in our view, um, we don't have a view, really. Mm -hmm. it's, it's what is in the word. Yeah. That, that is our standard. Um, God speaks. So I, 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 looking at it there, I, as a pastor, I would do counseling with a man and a woman. Yes. And uh, when two people, two males or two females come for counseling, it, to me, it would be like a Bible study. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Where <laughs> I am going to bring them back <laughs> to God's original standards. Yes. Yeah. And... Um, and, and let them know that God is dealing with our brokenness, despite of uh, whatever it is. God is going to, can help us to go back to the original. Yeah, well, you okay, see, because the, the question here <laughs> is a serious one. It talks yeah. about <laughs> counseling them to enhance <laughs> their, relationship. <laughs> their relationship. So, as a pastor, <laughs> if I'm going to counsel a gay couple, 
a lesbian couple mm -hmm. to enhance a relationship. Right there. Yeah. I'm disqualified as being a minister yeah, of God. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I no longer, I'm, I'm no longer representing God, God true. and the principles of God. True. I've just joined myself to Satan <laughs> and I'm doing his work. I'm yeah. doing Satan's work now. So um, I can counsel a gay couple, a lesbian couple, if, as Pastor Noel rightly says, yeah. my counsel is a Bible study <laughs> in helping to give them the right knowledge of yeah. God yeah. and what God requires, but um, but not to enhance the relationship. <laughs> what I'm, if if a minister does that? What the minister is doing is entrenching the people in sin, sin. Yeah. entrenching them in wrong, and therefore now the minister himself becomes sinful because yeah. now he he is encouraging others to practice sin. And therefore, he himself also is not practicing <laughs> sin. So <laughs> a minister has to, to, um, to actually run from that. Run yeah, from that. But we, we do have people who call themselves ministers today. Who yeah. are married, in, say, because the, law, the laws of the land yeah. says it's legal. They are married in same-sex people. True. These ministers cannot, and I say emphatically, these ministers cannot be representing God. Because no you cannot be representing God and you are endorsing sin. They are not representing God. True, Whoever true. that minister, that minister is. True, wonderful, wonderful. And it's important as you are um, rightfully saying that um, whenever this world is so distorted. Yes. And it shows what sin has done. Mm -hmm. And um, when something is wrong, as it relates to what the Bible says, it is wrong. It's wrong. Um, it doesn't matter what Pastor Francois says. Correct. It doesn't matter what Dr. Lewis says. True. If the Bible says yeah. it's wrong, it's wrong. Mm -hmm. um, you may say science and scientists are going in the direction to prove that it is right. Um, and that's what I love about the Bible and God and our world. Mm -hmm. I remember I was giving someone a Bible study and I, I told them that um, God didn't, when the Bible, the, in the beginning, Genesis, the Bible says in the beginning, God created. You know, sometimes when we introduce in ourselves, yes. we want to prove that we are real. God is God. Correct. God make these statements and that settles it. Amen. It doesn't matter Amen. what Pastor Francois say. Yes. Pastor Francois, what Pastor Francois may say, I'm just his opinion. Correct. To justify mm -hmm. a certain action. Mm -hmm. But what God says, that, that is it. Exactly. I may choose to, the, the decision is up to me now whether to choose what God prescribed. Yes. Or what I feel like I should do what I want. Exactly. And, and for us, I want us to understand that, yes, scientists may say they may allude certain things. They may go to the extent to convince many around the world. Mm -hmm. But even though they are convincing men of certain things and certain behavior, the Bible still stands. Correct. And as long as the Bible stands, that settles it for me as Amen. a pastor. And Amen. for many of us, to, yes, we would hear and things would, strange things would be coming to light as it relates to what scientists may think. Or yes. what they what what they may what they may bring forth and they may say new light. But if it doesn't match up to the Bible, there is no light. There is no there. light and there is no substance in it. Correct. And right. for us today, I want to encourage us. And as Pastor was saying, and um, I cannot give someone or the pastor I cannot give someone Bible well, well counseling to enhance the same. No. No, 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 no. no. You're actually going on against what the Bible That's says. Exactly. Or you actually are going against what you profess to Correct. Be. You exactly. And the pastor is one who teach. The mm -hmm. word of God to Amen. his people. And Amen. that is important, friends of mine. And as Dr. Lewis says, as Pastor Noel. Frankie Noel alluded to earlier on, it is important that while they may come for counseling, it is important for us to remind them of who they are. Yes. Yeah. As frail human beings who are being who are fractured by sin. And we are helping individuals in that area, and not just in that area, but in other practices. To recognize that, hey, God has a plan for your life. Correct. And God, we want to help you to put you back or to allow you to go back on the right track where God has designed you for Amen. Him in the first place. Amen. Yeah, so pastor, just, just to add, um, on, pastor. I think our viewers, we need to go back to the blueprint. Yes. 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 The dust said the Lord, once mm -hmm. we know the original, when the counterfeit comes, we are able to detect it. That's right. That's yeah. Wonderful, wonderful, That's wonderful. Correct. Thank you so much. Um, we are here, Pastor, with our final question. We had a wonderful time so far, and we are yes, having a wonderful time. Grace. And yes, the discussion is fruitful grace. because we have our online viewers as well who are participating in a very mark way. Um, yes. The Bible teaches that Jesus came to die for all. Hmm. Can same-sex couple 
couples rather be saved in God's kingdom? Please explain. I'll read over the question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now the Bible teaches that Jesus came to die for all. I can same-sex couples, same-sex couple, mm -hmm. those who are practicing that behavior. Mm -hmm. the, the question is asking those who are indulged in those behavior. Yeah. Um, can same-sex couples be saved in God's kingdom? Please explain. Okay. Um, if we look at First Corinthians chapter six, the entire chapter talks about that. Mm -hmm. Paul listed some of the sins there, and he said, "Know ye not that the unrighteous." shall not inherit the kingdom of God. He said, be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, um, nor adulteress, nor effeminate, um, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. And then he says here, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And he says, and such were some of you, but ye are washed, ye are sanctified. Amen. You know, so um, there would be former mm -hmm. homosexual yeah. and lesbians mm -hmm. who have changed their lifestyle yeah, right. and washed in the blood of Jesus in heaven. Yes, yes. yes. Wonderful. And Paul alluded to that. Yes. But yes. remaining in your sinful act, mm -hmm. God, the text says, he would not save the unrighteous. True. That's wonderful, right. Wonderful, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21. And she shall bring mm -hmm. forth a son. Thou shalt mm -hmm. call his name Jesus. For he it is who shall save his people from their sins. Yes. God cannot save anybody in sin. sin. True. Right. True. God could only save us from wow. sin. Yes. And so if somebody is in a, a, a same sex union, mm -hmm. that person can be saved. But they have to get out of that sinful yeah. practice mm -hmm. and give themselves to God. True, yeah. So that God uh, can make them whole, forgive them, yeah. and cleanse them. They are not beyond forgiveness. True. But uh, what they need is repentance. Exactly. Not saying, uh, Lord, forgive me of my sins, and you're staying in sin. Yeah. You have to get out of sin. Repentance is a heartfelt sorrow for sin yes. and a willingness to turn away. So yeah. the person has to recognize that they are a sinner. Recognize what they're doing is wrong. It's offensive to God. It's against the way of God. It's sin. Mm -hmm. And therefore, go to God and ask God to forgive them and to give them the power to walk away, yes. which uh, God provides, that power to walk away from sin yes. and to do right. So yes, they can be saved if they're willing to repent. Uh, that's the way God will be able to save wonderful, them. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful, wonderful. The pastors, the scholars have done a wonderful job this morning as we indulge in this as we have indulged in this discussion relating to same sex marriage and the final question was can same sex couples be saved in God's kingdom and yes. Dr. Lewis was alluding to the fact that uh, the mem everyone God wants all of us to be saved everyone but he doesn't save us in our sin no. he saves us from sin correct and therefore if you are in that union and you want to be saved then you must move away or break up from that union break up from that relationship and be saved because God cannot um this is important God cannot save you in your sin and as Dr. Lewis was saying you could say Lord forgive me for my sin and you remain then no it doesn't work like that that's right you that's have right. to move and that is to give a U-turn yes yeah. away from that completely correct. correct and surrender your life to Jesus Amen. so I just want to thank all online viewers who are with us this morning mm -hmm. we are so pleased that you have took the time out to join us yes I pray by the grace of God that you have been informed and re-informed of the the discussion that surrounds the topic of same-sex union and I pray by the grace of God that those who are, those of us who are viewing and who are followers of Jesus that we would encourage others to practice what the Bible teaches Yes. And also to demonstrate that agape love to everyone who we will encounter and who we have been encountering in our, in our walk with God. So at this time, I just want the pastors to give the final thought and encouragement to our online viewers as we, as we close. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I just want to say that um, there are some people who look at um, homosexuality and lesbianism as the sin that would keep you out from the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And the other sins that hating your brother and telling lies, 
They feel you could get into the kingdom with that. <laughs> but that's not so. Um, sin is sin. Yes. And uh, if any sin that is unconfessed, then God cannot forgive you. Yes. So I want us to live here that, to note that the Bible deals with our brokenness from Genesis to Revelation. And God is a loving God. And he's just waiting there to embrace us. And uh, to help us with the change. Yes. Because he loves us with, with an everlasting love. And I, I want to appeal to our viewers to get back to the original, to read the word, and to know what the word says. Mm -hmm. So that anytime these things come up, you are able to detect it because you know what the genuine thing says. The word yes. Says. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Praise God. Well, I want to... Uh, Recognize Sister Lashman, my, my friend, yes. uh, who is on here. And um, Sister Stedlin is always with us. We mm -hmm. thank you uh, so much. And uh, we want to thank all of you who have been um, with us uh, this morning for this uh, particular program. I want to say that God has done all he can to make provision so that everyone can be saved. True. That is in the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. Today, God continues to do all he can to seek to save every individual. And that's the role of the Holy Spirit. Speaking to us, that still small voice, telling us this is the way, walk in it. So God is doing everything to save us. And we must be willing to bring our lives in conformity to the will of God. We need to be listening to that still small voice. There is one standard of morality. And that standard is only God's standard. And so we should get away from making excuses sure. and bring our lives with the aid of the Holy Spirit yeah. in line with the principles of God, the law of God, yeah. so that God can save us into his everlasting kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. For again, I want to reiterate, God cannot save us in sin. Jesus came to save us from sin. And that's the way we'll be able to live with God forever. May God bless every one of you. And we finally I want to make an appeal to continue to come and view our program and to support us. Yes. Um, also financially support us as we continue to minister to you. God bless you. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Amen. Dr. Lewis. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, Pastor mm. Noel, we are so happy that you are you have took the time out to be with us here this morning. I just want to appeal to our online viewers in the well the eastern one and eastern two and east central district of our mega fest please that is coming up we just want to encourage each and every one of you to invite your friend please invite your family as please. you have been saved by the grace of god let others give others the opportunity to be saved by also Amen. inviting them not just inviting them but bring them come yes. with them yes so that they can gain the experience of serving god and being saved in his eternal kingdom. Amen. So I just want to appeal to our online members and visitors. The Megafest of 2022 would be held in the back of Progress Park. Yes. It would commence on the 9th of October. So I just, we have a vibrant and strong, young, energetic preacher, Pastor yes. Oliver Scott, yes. to be presenting the message. Amen. God has chosen him for such a time. Yes. And I pray by the grace of God, and I know by the grace of God, that he will do a tremendous job. Amen. So continue to pray for the preacher, continue Amen. to pray for the event. Yes. And not just pray for the preacher and the event, but also support us yes. in this adventure. And we know by the grace of God, when you are supporting us, you are supporting God as we continue to lead us, as he continue to guide us, as we continue to preach his everlasting gospel so come out one and all and be a part of this great grand mega fest gospel explosion which will be commencing on october 9th Amen. so at this time i just want to ask our dear pastor frankie noel to do our closing prayer our sister steadlin isaac just um, asked that we pray for her and her family okay so please um include her in that prayer okay, okay. wonderful okay our father and our god we thank you for the opportunity whereby we can talk to our viewers about your love, yes, your goodness, amen, and uh, you have died for all of us, and yes. you, you have extended your salvation to everyone, yes, and dear God, help us to lay hold of salvation, amen. It's only when we are in your salvation, we would see the need of others uh, becoming a part of your salvation, amen. So, dear God, our dear sister Isaac, 
we present her to you. Yes, what, Lord. Whatever the situation, you are yes. the great God. You are Amen. the mighty healer. Amen. You are the one, dear God, who knows more than the doctors. You are yeah. the only perfect physician. Yes. All others are practicing. Yes. They have to run tests. You don't have to because you know everything. Yes. And so, dear God, I place her into your care and I ask that your mighty hand would rest upon her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet, and whatever it is in the name of Jesus, we come against it. Yes. And so, dear Father, we, we pray for all the viewers. We, we pray that they would continue to view, they would continue to support and get others to, to view. We thank yes. you for Dr. Um, Lewis and uh, yeah. our, our, our host Amen. in a very special way, Pastor Francois. Dear yes. God, we thank you for the great work that you are doing in yes. his young life. Amen. And we pray that your blessing would be with us during the course of this day. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Do have a wonderful day. Amen. Amen. Drive, stop, and pray. Members, leaders, and prayer intercessors. Join the prayer ministries of the Grenada Conference of Seventh-day Adventists for our annual prayer motorcade on Sabbath, 24th September from 9 a.m. The motorcade starts from Chantemal Junction and continues to Marley Junction in Sotez. We break for lunch at the McDonald College and resume the motorcade to Rose Hill, Montreach and end at Hermitage, all at the historic parish of St. Patrick's. Come with hearts concentrated as we lift the name of Jesus and be blessed with lovely singing, powerful preaching, literature distribution, and fervent intercessory prayers. Remember, it will be a DSAP experience. Drive, stop, and pray. Join us with your buses, cars, and vans as we journey through St. Patrick's in gospel ministry stopping at every point for concentrated periods of ministry, evangelism, and intercession. It will be spiritually impactful. Let's be there. Megafest 2022 Gospel Explosion is coming. Join the youth of the Grenada Conference of Seventh-day Adventists from Sunday, October 9th at 7 p.m. for an electrifying evangelistic experience like no other. Come hear the ever-exhilarating Pastor Oliver Scott shatter the kingdom of darkness with thundering messages from the Word of God. If we have never needed the Lord before, we sure do need him now. Come, find hope in the midst of your people.